And today on Have a Knife Day, we are here at the Antique Firearm Show here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And of course, I'm here, we are here for the Antique Bowie Knife Collection. And now we have Dale Larson, he's gonna be telling us about this beautiful display of Bowie Knives that he brought today. Dale, go ahead. Well, the, obviously, keystone of the display is the knife that James Bowie gave to the American actor Edmund Forrest, uh, who was a, in the 19th century, he was the biggest star in America. Uh, but he played in New Orleans starting in 1824, uh, in the fall winter seasons for several years, and became friends, according to his biographers, with James Bowie. And Edmund Forrest has knife which is seen here in the display and this knife he says in several different newspaper interviews was given to him personally by his friend James Bowie. So the display actually shows pictures of Bowie, of Edmund Forrest, uh, also Forrest in his role of Metamora which was an Indian play which was one of his most popular plays with the public although he personally hated it because he was more of a Shakespearean lover. But uh, some people, this is the knife that he used in that play. Uh, and we can see from an early etching, it's almost certainly the knife that was used even from the very beginning. It was sold at a, at a sale of his props in 1883. But the knife itself that, that was given by Bowie, he kept. And when he died, he left his entire fortune to establish a home for down and out actors because while he'd been very successful and been able to invest money, because in those days the big actors got a piece of the, of the house. So if you drew big crowds, you made more money. But a lot of the players that played with him didn't have that kind of status. And he cared for them, and he had no heirs, so he left his fortune to establish a home for actors. It was in existence until 1987. And he left his library, his art collection, and some theatrical weapons, and the movie, which ended up in a display case uh, for many, many years until 1987, when they decided to close and merge with another home and dispose of things that weren't directly related to Forrest acting. Uh, as a result of that, the knife became available, and it was acquired by William R. Williamson, who was a noted North knife collector in the knife and later when his collection went to auction, it came into my possession. Most excellent. So it's a, it's, this is all things that go along with uh, authenticating the history of the knife, when we and Forrest would have met, uh, pictures about the knife, the history, where, where it's been, so we know then he had a knife, a Bowie knife, in 1835, according to a friend of his, and another friend in 1853 published a book in which he mentioned that Bowie had given this knife. The additional display has more to do with more of the Bowie family. This is Reason Bowie. These are two different pictures. This is an original picture of Reason from his family, the, his descendants. Also, there's a cameo with the same one is copied from the other, we don't know which, but both came out of the family collection. This is James Bowie's sword that, according to the family, he held in his portrait, where he's holding the sword, holding the sword, but the artist obviously changed the knuckle bow, but usually artists in those days would paint the face and then they filled in all the rest later. They would add their own embellishments. Yeah, exactly. uh, this portrait, uh, this is a copy of the original, which is in my collection, but I, it's too valuable to bring. But it was described in an article in, in the New York Herald in 1838. And it talks about this portrait hanging in the barroom of Bishop's Hotel in New Orleans, which is pictured here. And here is Bishop's bar license. Uh, and it was probably commissioned by Bishop for his, uh, for his bar room. Establishment. Yes. In the day, it was considered the most beautiful in America. It was a hundred foot tall. But in this portrait, he is holding the knife 
that is identical or is the knife that reasonably gave to Jesse Perkins, which we have a nice copy made here, but the original is in the Mississippi Department of Archives and History. But there's no question that he's holding that knife because when you compare the picture with the knife held in the same position, it's basically it's the same. And in addition to that, we have some other fine Louis knives. We have uh, this knife was made by James Black. It's the largest one known except for Bowie Number no. One, which is in the Arkansas Museum. Uh, there's a nice Shively knife. Uh, this is considered one of the most beautiful Bowies ever made. It's gold mounted. Uh, this is a nice English and Hubers, another well-known maker from the mid 19th century. And then a number of other antique Bowie knives. These are all pre 1950. This is the only known knife by this particular gunmaker, um, and it's pictured on the cover of New England. George Stewart. But George Stewart was a New, New England gunmaker, but he also made knives, but this is the only one that we know of. And this is a statue of James Bowie. America's Thor, Jim Bowie. Yeah. Yeah. Number one of limited edition by Bill Barber. And that was done for Bill Williamson. Well, oh, that's very cool. Another right? interesting thing about Bowie knives is, of course, when you think about Bowie knives, you think of most of the knives that I have explained to you. The earliest advertisement in print that we have found is in an 1831 newspaper. It was an ad by, repeated over several weeks by a hardware dealer. And what it advertises is fine lock spring Bowie knives. And so therefore, here's a you know, mid 19th century switchblade. But literally, the earliest reference to a Bowie knife in print is a folding knife. <laughs> that's great. And, and that was made here in the United States? No, that's an English knife. I, that's what I figured. Yeah. When, I, when I see the uh, certain uh, accruement, uh, I'm going to say. Yes, they, they, I, know, I just butchered that word. Okay. Uh, the horse head is very, very common. Very, very common. Yes. But yes, yeah, so this was an importer. And that's what he, but he's, yeah. but what we're interesting is, Obviously, to use the term Bowie knife, when you're in an advertisement, you assume that the reader knows what you're talking about. Yes, because yes. You know, I'm not selling perfume when I'm really trying to sell horse manure or something, yes, right? Yes. So think, well, they're both fragrant, yes, just in different, different ways. ways. <laughs> so what you have is an interesting thing that they would use that term for a folding knife. Because we always think of a straight A blade, big fake blade, blade. yeah. Knife, yeah. They yeah. Come around. And that's how we think the term originated it was probably after the widely publicized sandbar fight story which we have an original newspaper. before the internet yeah. <laughs> but in 1827 after the fight it was written up in the Natchez papers and then spread people probably went to their blacksmith and said I want a Bowie knife like yes. Bowie, but who knew what that was artistic liberty was taken exactly and and what artistic liberty we have on display here uh, Jim Bowie, uh, a controversial man of his time, a controversial man of this one too. Uh, but I tell you what, how many people do you know who were so badass that they had a whole knife style named after him? Well, Dale, okay. I really, really appreciate so you bringing this wonderful bit of history to share here with us. Um, us collectors in the knife community it's it's more than just what the knives are made out of it's the why behind this design it's the story that that fleshes it out and gives it more context and meaning and now it's all part of history dale thank you so much here comes a handshake right. thank you so much and have a nice day thank you.